price seal. This is a price that the government, as whatever government, typically enforces on a market that says, we don't want prices going too high, we want them kept to some reasonably low affordable level. Price ceilings are typically the, the action on the part of government to try to help the best interest of the consumers. Doesn't always work that way, but here's an example. Let's say that this is milk. And let's say that milk normally sells for $3 a gallon, and as a result, the equilibrium quantity in the market, or the average sales per store per day, 1,000 gallons of milk, okay? And the government, don't you hate that word? And the government comes along, and the government says, this price is so high, a lot of people can't afford all the milk they need for their young children. And we think, therefore, that the price of milk should be limited to only $1 per gallon. Now that sounds, you know, being uh, altruistic or me or trying to do positive good. We want to help the kids and their families out. And so we pass a law that says this is the maximum price allowed. This is a price ceiling. Let's draw that across here. The price ceiling. And notice that when the price ceiling is below the equilibrium price, that's when we get some problems. Because the price is not allowed to rise to its equilibrium, we have to look to each curve separately at this price and say, what's going on? For example, at $1 per gallon, what happens to the producers, the sellers, the dairy farmers who produce the milk? We read over to the supply curve, and we say, well, at that low price, they will supply a smaller quantity than they used to. That's the law of supply. When price falls, the quantity supply decreases. And in fact, they will only produce, let's say, 600 gallons of milk per store per day. So by imposing this artificially low price, you have reduced the willingness of suppliers to supply the product. And what else have you done? By reducing the price, look at the buyers. Buyers see a smaller price, read over to the demand curve, they want to buy more. It's, a, it's cheaper, so let's buy more. An increase in the quantity demanded, a decrease in the quantity supplied. So here's our new quantity demanded. Let's call that 1,100 gallons. This is the quantity demanded. This is the quantity supplied. And because the price floor, I'm sorry, the price ceiling is below equilibrium, we don't have enough to go around. People are trying to buy more than is available for purchase. We have, what do you call that? We have a shortage, and we can measure it here. It's 1,100 desired, 600 available, a shortage of 500 gallons of milk per day per store. So, who was the beneficiary of this wonderful government policy of reducing prices for milk? The 600 people who were able to buy it. But what about the other 500 who couldn't? And more importantly, perhaps, what about the 400 who used to be able to afford it and now are deprived of it because there's not enough of it on the market? So many times when, when outside agencies come in and try to hold prices artificially low, below their equilibrium, the result is not to improve the situation, but to create shortages, and often, as a result of the shortages, a black market. People buy a lot of this stuff, they hoard it, and then they sell it illegally at maybe $4 and $5 a gallon. great example of that would be a hurricane in South Florida. If there's a hurricane in South Florida, drinking water is in very, very short supply. And if people go out there and start selling drinking water for $15 a gallon, there's a few people that will buy it because they need it. Is that fair? And the argument is, no, that's not fair. That's price gouging. gouging. That's taking, care, taking advantage of those people. But to the economist who believes in markets and free markets, that's a wonderful thing. Because if some people take water down to South Florida and think they're going to sell it for $15 a gallon, what are the rest of the folks around the state going to do? They're, they're not stupid, not entirely. They say, well, let's get us some water, drive down to South Florida, and sell it. The next thing you know, you've got millions of people going to South Florida with water for sale. You have a huge increase in the supply of water. What happens to its price? It falls. So to the free market economists, the solution is for the government to stay out of it. 
and let people respond to that shortage by supplying more and more in the expectation of high profits. And as you get greater supply, the price gets bid down, down, and down. So generally we argue price ceilings are not very efficient, they're generally not very effective, and they have the adverse effect of also creating frequently black markets. That's price ceiling. Okay? Price ceiling set up here. Price ceiling of milk, ten dollars a gallon. Doesn't mean anything. It says you can't charge more than ten dollars for a gallon of milk. We're not charging ten dollars. The market's only charging three. So a price ceiling at or above equilibrium is meaningless. It has no effect on the market. A price ceiling below equilibrium creates a shortage.